confidence is a tricky skill. And so a lot of it is sort of back ending into confidence. We don't actually have lessons on confidence. For example, if you have a, a work on the shelves in which you're asking the students to color a map of Europe, all of the colored pencils, all of the pre-printed maps, everything the child would need to be able to do that job at any age would be available on, on that tray or in that section. They don't need to ask the teacher where can I find the pencils? Where can I do that? All of those small details about supply getting are made ready for the children prior to the lesson being given. When a child can do something by themselves, even at as young as three, they're far more confident than when they have to depend on an adult. And it's tricky because, um, you know, as adults, we, we kind of crave that we we feel like we're a good parent or a good teacher when the child needs us but actually you're a better parent and a better teacher when your child does not need you for everything Montessori said that a traditionally trained teacher needs to shed their skin and be created new um, it takes years to get over that habit that you are um, you're the teacher the one with the big desk and all the answers so praise usually is directed from you. I am proud of you. I think that's a great job. I, the adult, giving judgment on you, the child. Where encouragement sounds more like, are you proud of yourself? Do you think that's your best work? What do you like about that work? And it's, it's putting the center of the compliment or the praise on the child. We say all of our students work to a mastery level of 95% before they can go on to the next work. And behind the scenes, um, in the teacher world, we have many charts and tracking devices that we use in order to make sure that this student got all their division facts before they learn long division or all their multiplication facts or subtraction facts, that they know that before they're given the next harder work. The spiral curriculum means that we cover the concepts at the ages of three to six, and then at a deeper level at six to nine, at a deeper level at nine to 12, and a deeper level at adolescent level. The example I love to give in parent meetings is for um, the smallest children, they might learn about insects. They might learn about, about the parts of an ant and what an ant's job is and what an ant does and what they eat, some basic facts. The six to nine year olds might also learn about insects and they might learn about the different types of ants and what other insects are ants related to and um, where they live in the world. And then the nine to 12 year olds might learn about insects in the sense of what is happening to the insects because nine to 12 year olds also care about the environment. Who eats the ants and what, what do the ants eat and how do they fit in the biome and what, how do we protect them and how do we take care of them? And then the very oldest children might do something, the middle school children might do something about rainforests that would incorporate that, that work that they've learned all the way along. In the early years, the three to six year old is, is just innately curious and they wanna know how and why everything works. And so as long as you can keep that curiosity um, being from them and that they own that, and if they want to know more that the teacher just constantly is going back and you know they have one child who's interested in rocks, but another child who's interested in dinosaurs and they're just constantly feeding that need um, rather than saying, I'm sorry, you're interested in dinosaurs. Today, we're gonna to talk about rocks. The role of the teacher is not to have that prepared set lecture. The role of the teacher is to be much more kind of like Mary Poppins with this gigantic bag of, of tricks. And they need to know in a class of 20, 20 different tricks. When a child starts to get bored with doing their work, there are things they'll do. They might change it up and say, I, I see you've been doing that work with this material, but did you know you can do it also with this other material? If we're working on our math facts and we're really struggling with math facts, um, one trick we might do is send the child to the office to help the office manager with some ordering. If we need to have three paper towel rolls in every room and we have 12 rooms, how many do we need? And so the child is doing their math facts, but they don't really realize they're doing their math facts and they're doing them with the office manager instead of their teacher. And they feel big and important to go back to that confidence.